By the end of this video, you will be able to summarize the process of seafloor spreading and how evidence for it supports plate tectonic theory. You will be able to compare and contrast the age of ocean floor rock farther away from and nearer to a mid-ocean ridge and explain why this supports plate tectonic theory. And you will be able to explain the significance of the pattern of Earth's magnetic field recorded in ocean crust rocks and how this provides support for seafloor spreading and tectonic plate motion. What do you have over there, Jeff? Oh, I'm just organizing my magnet collection. His magnet? He's got a magnet collection. <laughs> how about that? So tell me a little bit about what you know about magnets. Well, these magnets have um, a north pole and a south pole which uh, equate to a positive and negative charge. A positive and negative charge. And the Earth is like a big magnet with a positive and negative charge at opposite ends of the Earth. Our magnetic field of Earth is generated by the liquid outer core of the Earth. And it's also what helps us to navigate if we use a compass, although I know most of us use GPS on our phones uh, now. But the Earth's magnetic field and the exploitation of Earth's magnetic field has allowed us to understand plate tectonics. So if you remember Alfred Wegener, who came up with the idea of continental drift and the idea of, of the supercontinent Pangaea, um, he couldn't come up with a mechanism as to how and why continents were moving around. And so his ideas uh, kind of got put on the shelf. And even though he continued to persist that they were still valid, uh, Basically, by the time he died in 1930, continental drift kind of almost died along with him. It was World War II and the Cold War uh, uh, explosion of technology after World War II that helped us to understand uh, and advance the, his cause of continental drift to the modern theory of plate tectonics. And our understanding of Earth's magnetic field certainly uh, helped along with that. So our demonstration here today is to simulate uh, one of the things that is proof positive of plate tectonics, and that's seafloor spreading and the reversals of Earth's magnetic field, that Earth's magnetic field goes through every so often. Uh, the idea of seafloor spreading and why these continents are drifting actually got its ideas in the late 1950s by a geologist named Harry Hess, who presumed that the seafloor was spreading, that somewhere in the middle of the ocean there were these ridges that was producing the magma and sh being shoved apart to both sides. So if we took the two sides of our uh, ocean floor, if you want to grab both ends, we can presume that the line uh, down the middle is our mid-ocean ridge where new ocean uh, rock is being created as magma comes up from the asthenosphere and hardens. Um, we can draw a line right down the middle right there. Of course, the <laughs> ink decides not to work. Right there we go. And at one time in the Earth's past, um, it may have been just like the magnetism uh, that Earth is experiencing today in which it is normal so we'll put a positive sign indicating that the rocks that were formed at this time were magnetic normal, okay? And that boundary is gonna be an important indicator there. So let's pull apart, let's let our seafloor spread a little bit, keep going. All right, we'll stop right there. And this rock is during our magnetic reversal. So we'll put negative signs there to indicate that during this time, Earth's magnetic field was flipped from what it normally is. And we'll put our line down the middle, indicating that this is the boundary between the normal and reverse. So if we want to keep on spreading our sea floor, okay, that's good. We'll mark this as normal with positive signs. And we'll keep on spreading our sea floor a little bit more. Right there. And keep going. And that's good. And keep going. Right there. And keep going. Right there. And we're now we're at the middle. So we'll kind of mark that today and we'll put the positives on both sides. So, Erica, where's the youngest rock at this point, if this is our spreading seafloor? Where's the youngest 
rock. Right in the middle of it? Right in the middle at our mid-ocean ridge. And Andrew, where is the older rock? Uh, on the edges. On the edges here, uh, both at the edges. So the older rock gets pushed or shoved aside. What do you notice about the pattern of the positives and negatives, Jeff? Uh, it just keeps going back and forth. It keeps going back and forth. And would you say that it's symmetrical on both sides of the ridge? That it's positive, negative? So we see this symmetrical pattern of alternating positive and negative anomalies or reversals and normals, normal reverse, normal reverse, throughout Earth's history, where the older rock gets pushed off to the side, and the youngest rock is at the mid-ocean ridge. So this idea, this, this exploitation of Earth's magnetic field, first done by uh, Fred Vine and Drummond Matthews in the early 60s, again, all as a result of that post-World War II explosion of technology, really a result of the Cold War and trying to make sure that we understood our planet. So this idea of seafloor spreading by Harry Hess in combination with understanding Earth's ancient magnetic field by Vine and Matthews uh, helped us to really cement this idea of moving tectonic plates that the seafloor was spreading and being shoved off or pushed off uh, from the ridge at the middle and being pushed off to both sides. And it produces older rocks farther away, young rocks at the middle, and this alternating symmetrical pattern of normal reverse um, rocks on the ocean floor. And remember that positive and negative is all the result of the iron that is in the rocks produced by the uh, rocks, by this magma that's cooling at this mid-ocean ridge, and the iron atoms are kind of aligning themselves with Earth's magnetic field, just like a compass always tries to orient itself uh, to north and why you have positive and negative and north and south poles on Jeff's uh, magnet collection over there. When you have finished watching the video, you'll be taking a short questionnaire that will ask you to rate your confidence on a scale from 0 to 10 in performing all of the learning objectives, where 0 is not confident or sure you can do any of the objectives, 5 is fairly confident or sure you can do some of the objectives, and 10 is very confident or sure you can do all of the objectives. <laughs>